Hi, Mark Rivera from uh, Board Games and Variety and UK Gaming Media Network. It is my distinct pleasure to uh, have with us as a special guest is Larry Rosnai from Mayfair Games, President of Mayfair Games. And we're just going to have a little chat to talk about Mayfair Games and uh, all the wonderfulness that that brings us. Uh, Larry, welcome to the uh, exhibition. Thank you. Great. What's your first impressions about the UK style of exhibition? I uh, actually enjoyed my time here. It was uh, very interesting to walk in here yesterday and see the crowds and all the different retailers and all the different folks playing the demo games and everything else. In fact, I was quite impressed with yeah, how many bodies were here and how proud it was. So, uh, very, very interesting. I've been in the UK before. Uh, obviously, it's really interesting. Have you got a little bit of a sense of is there, do you think there's a difference between the UK marketplace and the American marketplace? Well, as far as, far as convention goes, of course, uh, we're talking before, um, the, the concept of not having quite as many game publishers here, and the more the shops and the pub, few publishers are here, are mostly doing other games things like that, or being represented by distributors or other shops, as opposed to actually being here themselves. It's a slightly different dynamic when you run into back from states, or even like an essay or something like that, which is again another different story. But most of the publishers aren't selling, so they don't end up as much as they So it's a different dynamic here, but it seems to work just fine. You know, I noticed the line this morning, even on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, they were here, you were queued up to uh, get into the show that hadn't been here before. And, you know, so that's a pretty good thing. Okay. How about a little background about Mayfair Games? Can you tell us a little bit of the story of Mayfair Games? <laughs> the story of Mayfair Games. You got an hour? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the short version. Sure, uh, sure. Mayfair Games started in 1981, so we're coming up on our 30th anniversary of continuous game publishing. Right. Uh, there was a a whole bunch of board games, of course, role playing games, and even collectible card games coming out of Mayfair all the way up through 1996. Uh, then there was a major management shift. The old guys walked off, and the new guys took over in 1997. And then two years later, they brought me in as president. And of course, I'd been the seventh uh, demo monkey, as we call it, for them years previously. And uh, we took a different approach when I came on board spent more time on the business end of the world, concentrated more on just board games and non-collectible card games. And that seems to have been the proper focus for us at least. And changing the way we go to conventions, more demo games, plus just trying to sell. And we've managed to build ourselves up with Catan and our real games to do these other things over the years to the point where we're a real company now, so to speak, and going into our 31st year. And uh, still publishing 10 or 12 titles a year, more game card game, and everything. Uh, all different varieties, all different authors. And uh, it's just, it's really getting to be a lot of fun. Uh, unfortunately, we have to think about the business every yeah, time again sure. to get back to work. I really yeah. don't play games all day. Yeah, that was you, know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, you're the president of the paper, so that's what you do is play games all day. <laughs> yeah. And what I like to say is I play games with real money. Really? So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned, 30 years, um, any special events, celebrations? No, we're really, we're really not up playing that a whole lot right now. You know, I mean, our thing has always been about longevity instead of the quick hit. You know, I mean, take a look at one of our most popular games like Empire Builder. It's been in print for 28 years and it's still selling like a new game. It, it, is, it is pretty you know, and the whole series is pretty popular as well. You know, then of course we've got the giant baton, which always helps us out. We've been doing that for 15 years now, uh, going on 16. And, you know, it's just, our thing is about doing the best games we can find, giving them the best care that we can give them, and then keeping them in print as time goes on. You know, I mean, of course we do abandon titles every now and again, but by and large, most of our stuff has a history. And if we find something good, we keep on pounding at it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we're trying to come up with new variants or new variations or just going out and finding the best authors with the best games, whether they're established or new guys. You know, and playing special for our partners. Let's talk about the behemoth that is Catan. Yes. That's not an elephant to me, that's the behemoth that's... Yep. We like where, to call it the Hammer of God. The Hammer of God, I like yes. that. Yes. What, what's the, no, is it Catan the movie? Is it, what's next? Well, you know, 
the interesting dynamic is we have the we have the we have the keys, the license, the permission, we have you to do the board game and everything of that nature in English worldwide. Okay, we're not we're not set with only America or North America or whatever. If there's an English market, or even if it is an English market, we can still sell our English language games into whatever market we think to do. There's a number of projects that itself is dealing with the electronic rights, the book rights, the movie rights, okay. Uh, there was a book published in Germany uh, about Japan. It's about to be translated into English and, and sent out to the American market. Uh, we'll see about that. And, and i got to tell you that people are calling us up on a weekly basis. I want to do a movie. I want to do a iPod app. I want to do a Blackberry app. I want to do a Facebook app. I just might say, uh, so on and so forth. And it, it, it's a difficult thing of trying to sort through all of that. And then, of course, Catan really takes care of most of that anyway. We assist them, but we are just assisting them. This is their property. We got the board game rights. We are also a very good partner with Catan. And a long term license with them. There's no, 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 no talk at all about moving on to anybody else. And so we support. Them as much as they support us. So, is Catan your number one seller? Absolutely. That's an obvious question. That, that's, that's an obvious question. It's an obvious answer. But because Catan is our best seller, it gives us the ability then to use the, the inroads that we get with Catan to fund our marketing and our, our just general presence for everything that we do, not just the time. I mean, we are made for games, okay, and there's no blurring of that line. Does, it, okay. does that success of the time enable and facilitate made for games to perhaps take more risks? Yes, ab absolutely. It, 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 it allows us to, you know, take, a, take another game at perhaps a lower margin or something like that because we think it's good and it will eventually find its niche wherever it goes, and because we are doing what we're doing with Catan, that enables us, it gives us the resources then, it gives us the resources to uh, to, to go ahead and, and do these other things. I mean, the presence that we have this year at the American shows, with the big booth, the 25 demo tables inside and all that, a lot of that is available to us because Catan is as successful as it is. You know, so we got this much as Catan, this much as the rail games, we've got all this other kind of stuff that goes together. So we look at as a whole, but of course, we, as, as a whole thing, but we can't obviously we can't ignore Catan because that's really what puts the dinner on the table. You know, at, at the end of the day, that's what puts the money in my pocket or our pockets and so on. So it works out very well. But it does enable us. And, and Catan, the people at Catan are wonderful and they understand all this and they realize that if we promote ourselves, by default, we're promoting them as well. We never forget that this is what's got us here. Okay, and, and keep that focus. Um, challenges in the marketplace now. Uh, recession, worldwide, financial issues. What are the major challenges? Well, I, I, love, I, love, I love to talk about this because because of the recession and because of the economy being in the, in the toilet, okay, people are staying home. Okay, now, let's say you've got $50 of disposable income. That's all you got. Or you used to have a couple of hundred dollars, okay? You can't go to a movie with your family of more than $50 because it's not possible. Uh, you can have a nice dinner with your wife, perhaps, but frankly, that's here today going to be uh, There's nothing on television. I've got 500 channels at home, and I'm watching reruns all the time. But for that same $50, you can buy a board game, whether it's Catan or somebody, something from another company or whatever, and that board game is good to play today, next week, next month, and next year. And, and even some of the larger concerns in America, like Hasbro, they're promoting family gaming, okay, which indirectly helps us because we're saying stay home with your family once a week and play a board game. Yeah. Sit across the table from each other and actually interact. Yeah. Okay, instead of sitting in front of the computer and playing with nobody. Right? Because you're just playing either with the computer or if you are playing with people, they're not in the same room. You might have a chat box or something, but you don't see their face. You don't see what they're doing and you don't know even who you're playing with. Okay? And even though that's still as popular as it's always been, the video game companies are making a fortune. The other end of that is you buy a video game adventure and you play it once 
is there any replayability? Because once you figure out how to get to the end, there's only really one way to get there. You know, and this has been true for years. I remember playing the Doom computer game, right? And then I played it a second time, and I tried to go somewhere else, and I couldn't get there. I lost. Okay. So a lot of the larger adventure games like that, once you finish it, get to the highest level, okay. So now I got this video game, I might as well put it in the bin or bring it back to the shop and see if I can get 10% discount on the next one. Okay? But if you buy Catan or if you buy Empire Builder or if you buy any of the wonderful games that are here that are from other companies, you can play them over and over again. You know, some are, some are a bit more flexible like Catan with the Fairy of the Board. But others, always, there's always something new. There's always something new. You know, you don't get the same cards every time. You don't get the same dice rolls every time. You know, so games are what I call a reusable resource. Okay. So board games, analog board games and card games. Oh, absolutely. Yes, this is um, right, so what's coming the rest of this year? What's coming the rest of the year? Well, just this last week we released the Struggle for Catan card game, which is a multiplayer card game for two to four players. Uh, which released last week and was supposed to be original sales on fairly good. Uh, we'll be publishing a uh, Martin Wallace Steam expansion. Uh, Steam map, uh, three maps in one. And that should be coming out in about two to three weeks. Is that the one with the Civil War? No, we're not there yet. He's, he's, I'll get to that one in a minute. The Steam board is it's three in one. Uh, I forget what one of them is, but one of them is Belgium, which is like a half a board. Then I've got another two or three player board. And then if you flip that board over and attach it to your existing Steam board, you've got a possible seven player American scenario. So we're giving you three variants of one. Okay, with an extra sheet of tiles and you'll need them. Okay, and this board is packaged up, and so that should be out in three to four weeks. Then soon after that, we'll be publishing uh, Martin Wallace's uh, Test of Fire first bull run, which is the first in a series of five Civil War games that we have planned one a year. I'm really excited about the Civil War game. Well, well, we're coming up on the 150th anniversary yeah, of the right. Civil War. This is the 150th anniversary of the start. So our plan is to pick a battle from 61, 62, yeah. and so on, and publish that game in 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And, all, and these are all going to be a series by Martin Wallace. He's already been contracted. Bull Run is the first one. I'm not sure what we're looking at for next year, but we're not necessarily Shiloh, but we're not going to necessarily look for the games, for the battle games that have already been published. Okay, so we're looking at doing some of the lesser known but nonetheless important battles that happened over the years with the Civil War. So that's the Civil War game, the Civil War series that's starting this year. But then come August, we should have the rails back out in, in a box for the first time, which I'm sort of very happy about. That's my, my design. I designed, my brother and I put that together for Old Mayfair in 1992. So it's finally gotten to the point where everyone's like, you got to put this in a box, you got to put this in a box. I'm like, are you sure? Yes, we are sure. And for those that want to be really crazy, they've actually convinced me to write a variant to go to five and six players with that skinny little man. And that's going to be the first thing I'm going to write in my little variant explanation is, okay, if you're really crazy, <laughs> this is how you play with six players. Because there isn't really enough room in the geography, but they're going to try it anyway. So that that's that's uh, August's release. And then, of course, we're going to be doing the Akmorpot game uh, with Mark as a co-producer for the American market. Right, okay. Okay, um, so we're pretty excited about that. That'll be out come October. And then I know there's something else called oh, Giza. Giza, pyramid building. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Pyramid building. We've actually uh, gotten ourselves a one, two, nine piece plastic pyramid. Okay, that as the game progresses, you're actually going to be building the Great Pyramid of Giza piece by piece by piece. And you'll be operating a competing work group. So your work crew is trying to build the pyramid faster than the other work crews are. Okay. Okay. Yes, and then uh, I think that's pretty much it for the year. I probably forgot something, but you know, that's what we are. I'm sure you'll get an email from that. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure, our, I'm sure Bob will send me something. How come we didn't talk about this? You know, But uh, I don't have the schedule in my pocket, so I...
Well, Larry, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you, and I really thank you for giving us some time at UK Expo. I appreciate your time. Great. Mark Rivera, UK Gaming Media Network, live at Expo.